Hello! <laughs> yeah, time for another top 10 video. What's up, Thrill Seekers? So today, I have for you guys another top 10 video. This video is my top 10 roller coasters at Six Flags. No, it's not. It's not. It's not Six Flags. My top 10 roller coasters at King's Dominion. Um, so yeah, let's really get right into it. If you want to see my vlog from King's Dominion, um, it will be right up here in the corner. Um, and yeah, go check that out um, before or after you watch this video. All of the POVs in this video are not mine. Um, I'll probably say like all POVs are from this person um, or if they're from different people then I'll kind of just um, put their name in the corner so that you can go check out the original POV. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. Starting it off at number 10 is Grizzly, which is a um, wooden coaster at the park. And yeah, it's not very good. Um, the, there's a reason why it is my number 10. And that is really just because it is insanely, insanely, insanely rough. Um, and I didn't even sit in a wheel seat. I sat the second to back. Um, so maybe if you ride more towards the front, then it's better. Um, and a night ride is pretty okay because it kind of goes through the woods and stuff. Um, but it still hurts so bad that really I don't think I would ride it again. Um, it's just not a good coaster, like plain and simple. It's just not a good coaster because it's so rough. Um, you slam into the restraints, like my hips slammed into the uh, bar many, many times um, and that hurt really bad. Um, slammed my ribs into like the side of the car. Like it's just not an enjoyable ride because of the roughness of it. Number nine is Woodstock Express, which is a, another wooden coaster, but is a family wooden coaster. Um, and this one isn't like rough or anything like that. It's just kind of boring. Um, literally, you don't get any airtime or anything like that. Uh, it kind of just goes up and down and turns around and goes up and down. So um, it's a pretty boring ride, nothing too special. Um, it's kind of just there, so. Uh, definitely get it for the credit, and I would say that it's fun, I guess, um, and it doesn't cause you any pain like Grizzly does, um, but it's not the most enjoyable. Number eight is Apple Zapple, which is a wild mouse that they have. It's right next to Twisted Timbers, um, and Apple Zapple is pretty fun, to be completely honest. Um, it starts off with a pretty big drop um, before going into the, like, I guess, turn, turny sections. Um, so that's kind of fun. Here, let me center myself. Um, so that's pretty fun, um, and... Uh, overall, it's a pretty decent wild mouse. Um, I would say that it's still a wild mouse, so it's still not like the best thing ever. Um, but it's definitely better than Gotham City Gauntlet Escape from Arkham Asylum at Six Flags New England. That one sucks. Um, and I think it's pro personally better than, um, uh, Coast Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. Um, so, so far, it's probably one of my favorite wild mouses, but it is still a wild mouse, so that's why it's ranking decently low on this list. Located at the number seven spot is another family coaster, and that is Backlot Stunt Coaster. Um, Backlot Stunt Coaster is a launched family coaster, and it is pretty fun, to be completely honest. Um, I would say that the launch isn't forceful in any way, um, but you can definitely feel the launch. Um, so like, you know, you get pushed back a little bit in your seat, but it's not anything like insane. Um, but it's definitely a fun ride. Um, that's kind of like the main thing of it is it's a very, very, very fun ride, um, which is really what I like about Backlot Stunt Coaster. Um, the effects are pretty okay. Um, there's definitely a decent amount of theming, um, definitely more theming than a lot of the other roller coasters, um, at, 
uh, King's Dominion, so that's pretty good, um, but it's still not super insane. It's still a family coaster, um, but it's probably one of the best family coasters, probably the best family coaster in the park. Number six is an arrow looping coaster, and that is Anaconda. Um, Anaconda is not the best. Um, of course, it is an arrow looping coaster, so it is definitely decently rough. Um, although the first half of it, I would say, is relatively smooth. Um, I say relatively in terms of relative to a lot of the other, um, a lot of the other arrow loopers that I have been on. Um, so relative to those, um, like Corkscrew at Canopy Lake Park or Corkscrew at King's Dominion, um, it is definitely s smooth, I guess, um, uh, compared to those, uh, but definitely the second half, you bang your head a couple of times, um, and it just has some pointless elements. Um, I mean, like literally after the mid-course break run, you kind of just go into circles a couple times, which is kind of weird, um, and it's still definitely a boring coaster. It still ranks um, higher than um, a decent amount of coasters on this list just because it is still like a thrill coaster, so it's still more exciting than like lots of the family coasters, um, and again, it's smoother. Um, I didn't really bang my head too much, um, so yeah, it's an okay coaster. I would not be sad if they took it out um, just to like kind of open up the lake and make it super pretty and stuff, um, but it's it's there for now. Number five is another wooden coaster. It's actually a racing wooden coaster, appropriately named Racer 75. It used to be called Rebel Yell, um, but most likely uh, they are now calling it Racer 75, I'm assuming, um, because of, you know, the uh, Civil War reference with the other name. Um, I'm assuming that people might have complained and stuff like that, um, but in my heart, it's always going to be Rebel Yell, but it is called Racer 75 um, now, and it's a pretty good ride, I would say. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to ride it last time I went, but I did ride it the, um, the time before, and it's definitely a good ride. Um, the only rough part is um, at the bottom of the hill right before you go up into the turnaround. That is insanely rough, um, so not a fan of that. But um, overall, it's still, like, the rest of the ride is not smooth, um, but it's definitely not painfully rough like Grizzly is. Um, so it's a, it's a good ride, it's a fun ride, um, and... I would be decently sad if they, um, if they tore it down unless something awesome took its place. Number four is really starting to get into, like, the pretty good rides, um, starting it off with Flight of Fear, um, or as I called it, Poltergeist in a Box. Um, so Flight of Fear is actually a Spaghetti Bowl clone, um, it's a Premier Ride Spaghetti Bowl clone. Um, just like Poltergeist at Six Flags or at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, uh, which is my home park. Um, there's also a Flight of Fear at Kings Island, from my knowledge, um, and I think there's another Poltergeist at Six Flags America, um, if I'm correct. I'm not 100% sure on that though. Um, but anyways. Uh, yeah, it's a cloned ride, but it is still a good ride. I actually found it a little bit worse than um, Poltergeist Not in a Box um, at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. For some reason, I just didn't enjoy it that much um, or as much. I felt like it was a little bit rougher, a little bit jankier, um, kind of just felt like it was really, it didn't age well, basically, um, is what I'm trying to say. It just kind of felt like it was falling apart, um, but it was still a, like a fun ride. Uh, the launch was decently forceful, um, and it's still definitely a fun ride. So, yeah, that's uh, that's Flight of Fear. 
Now at the number three spot, these are really like the top three coasters at the park that most people talk about. Number three is the B&M Floorless, which is Dominator. Um, Dominator is located right at the front of the park, so you can see it when you're walking in. You can see it from the parking lot, and I would say it's a pretty good ride in my opinion. Um, I would say that it ranks around middle-ish tier, middle to high tier. Um, of B&M Floralists, I think it's around as good as um, as Scream at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Maybe a little bit better, um, but yeah, I mean it's a pretty good ride. Honestly, um, it's a pretty good ride and definitely something that I like to ride every time that I go, um, at least once because you know it's a pretty pretty like major ride at the park. Um, so the loop is super, super fun. You get insane, an insane amount of hang time from that. Um, the cobra roll is surprisingly smooth um, and not as whippy as um, the one on Alpengeist, which everyone complains about because you bang your head a whole bunch. Um, I think that the cobra roll on Dominator is probably one of, if not the best Cobra roll that I've been on, which is super awesome. It does get a little bit rough um, on the ending interlocking corkscrews, but I found that um, on pretty much all B&M Floralists, um, the interlocking corkscrews at the end tend to be a little bit um, rough or kind of rougher than the rest of the ride. Uh, it definitely does have a B&M rattle to it, that's noticeable, but not bad, I would say. So yeah, it's a good ride. Definitely suggest going on it to get some really good hang time. And yeah, that's Dominator. At the number two spot is actually a coaster that um, changed from my number one spot the last time that I went. And that is Twisted Timbers. Um, Twisted Timbers is the new RMC um, that opened in 2018. And I think it's a really, really good ride. Um, it's super, super fun. The barrel roll drop is super unique and super, super fun. Um, I think it's probably one of my favorite drops just because the transition from hang time to air time is so prevalent that it's like, it's super strong hang time and then you twist into super strong air time, which is super cool. Um, the three back-to-back -back air time hills give some amazing flow ejector air time. Uh, but the reason why I rank it below Intimidator 305 is because if you know me and my preferences, um, then I actually am not a big fan of strong ejector airtime. Um, if you are, then this coaster is 100% for you. Um, the second half of the ride has insanely strong ejector airtime that flings you from one side to the other side. There's a tri trick track double up, um, which is super forceful and gives like pretty good um, negative g-forces. Um, and definitely like flings you from one side to the other. Um, and really overall, the second half is pretty crazy. Um, you're just going up and down and side to side and it's pretty crazy, um, but that's not really what I like. Um, I like more graceful rides in that, um, like, you know, it, it sticks to one thing for like a second. Um, so I love the ride in terms of the first drop in the three back-to-back -back airtime hills. That's why it's still in my top 15 coasters that I've ridden. Um, but I personally prefer Intimidator 305 over it. And speaking of Intimidator 305, number one is of course Intimidator 305 um, at King's Dominion. And this coaster is super, 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 super fun. Um, in my opinion, it is a little bit overrated. Just in that I do not get at all how it's better than 
Um, like, I don't get how it's in people's top five coasters that they've been on. Um, it is, I think, in my top 10. Um, if not, it's like number 11 or 12, um, maybe. Um, but I think it's in my top 10 coasters that I've been on. Uh, so it's super great and I love it. Um, but I do think it is a little bit, just a tad bit overrated. Um, just in my opinion, my dad would definitely argue with that because he thinks that it's the number one coaster that he's ridden, like better than Steel Vengeance, um, which is a bold statement, but one that I think a lot of people share with him. Um, <coughs> Micah. <coughs> um, but anyways, yeah, it's a really, really fun ride. Um, I love the forces on it. Um, it's definitely a super insanely forceful ride, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I like the feeling of like graying out on the first turn. Um, and something that's super cool is because you gray out so much, you can't really see that well in front of you. So the airtime hill actually catches you by surprise, which is pretty fun. Um, so it gives you some great floater or flow ejector airtime. Um, the first drop is super great. You really get to that, uh, the top of the lift hill pretty fast, um, which is cool. And overall, it's a super fun, really, really fun ride. Um, the only complaint I have is um, the restraints. The restraints really do push down on your thighs. Um, but if once you, you like you get used to it after a second, um, so that's most likely why I prefer twisted timbers over it um, last time. And that's actually another thing that I don't like about twisted timbers is the restraints. Um, but maybe just because I was growing, um, I've been growing a lot, um, the restraints for Twisted Timbers hit my, um, hit my shins more in terms of the shin guards. Um, so I enjoyed it a lot less. Um, and really the ones on I-305 just stayed the same for me. Um, so yeah, the one, both of the restraints aren't really the best. Um, but once you get over them, uh, once you get past them, um, Intimidator 305 is super, super fun and an awesome ride. Anyways, that is, uh, it for my list of the top 10 roller coasters at King's Dominion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the thumbs up button. Comment below, what do you think about my list? Um, if you want to see my Parks Vlogs playlist, go check it out right up here in the corner. Another thing that you can check out is more top 10 videos I've done. Um, one on Six Flags Fiesta Texas, Over Texas, Six Flags St. Louis, um, Knott's Berry Farm, Six Flags Magic Mountain just came out a bit ago, as well as Busch Gardens um, Williamsburg. So to go check out all of those videos up in the corner. This is my top 10 playlist right here. Um, and like I said, comment below on um, if you agree with my list, if you disagree, uh, really what, what are your thoughts. Of course, subscribe for more videos just like this one, as well as park vlogs and reviews coming very, very soon. And I will see you guys all next time. Peace.